Okay, so our radicals reviewed is today. Your test is tomorrow. Um, so for every problem, assume all variables represent positive numbers. Uh, match the rational exponent with the equivalent radical expression. Assume x cannot be 0. So here, I want you to realize this whole thing is to the 1 fourth power. Well, remember, the bottom number is your root. The top is your exponent. Okay, so knowing that, we are going to have a fourth root of this whole thing to the first power. Do I have to put a first power? No. So I'm looking for this. So fourth root with a negative 4x on the inside is f. Now here it's almost exactly the same, except, huh? Yeah. Except you have a negative. So we're still going to have a fourth root with a negative 4x, but because it's negative, what does that make my answer? A fraction. <laughs> so we're looking for this on the bottom of a fraction. <laughs> okay, so we have H. So any of the ones that have a negative exponent, okay, the exponent is what makes it a fraction. So this one has a negative exponent, this one has a negative exponent, this one has a negative exponent. Now, the difference here is this whole thing, thank you, has a negative one-fourth. So the whole thing is going to be a fraction. So that is here, C. Now, what's different about numbers 6 and 7? They don't have the parentheses, meaning on number 6 and 7, the only thing that has the 1 fourth is the x, not the 4. So we're going to have this negative 4, and then we're going to have a fourth root x to the negative 1 power, which means this piece is going to become a fraction, not the negative 4. So you can multiply the negative 4 on top, which gives us d. Because if I make the negative 4 a fraction, I get over 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 1 times this is just itself. Now this one has a positive 4. Yes, I can say that again. Okay, the negative 4 is not have the exponent, just the x, because there's no parentheses. See how here they had parentheses? Okay, this one does not have parentheses, meaning that the only thing that has the negative one-fourth exponent is the x. So I just put the negative 4 out front, okay? And I focused on this. So the fourth root x to the negative 1 power, well, negative 1 means it needs to be on the bottom of a fraction. Yes? So I moved it to the bottom. And because I'm going to combine these, because all of these are combined, I can turn this into a fraction which is negative 4 over 1, right? Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and then 1 times the fourth root of x is the fourth root of x. So I got this one. Sorry. So same concept here, except what's, gonna, what's the difference? What's the only difference between 6 and 7? There's no negative in front. So which one looks exactly the same without a negative? A. Okay, so now let's focus on the ones that don't have a negative on the exponent. These are not going to be fractions, and we'll notice that none of them are fractions that are left. So here, the whole thing is to the one-fourth power, which means the whole thing is going to be under the house. So we're looking for that one, which is going to be G. Here, the only thing, because there's no parentheses, is the X. So we're going to have a negative 4 in front, and we're going to have a fourth root x in behind it, which is b. And then the last one is hopefully e. It's, it is. If you notice, it's exactly the same as 5. The only difference is it doesn't have a negative in front. So 5 was b. The only difference between these two is it doesn't have a negative in front. Okay. So when it says write in radical form, that means I need to see a radical. So I want you to realize this is a fourth root 
to the what power? And then m goes on the inside. I can't simplify that, so that's, that's just writing it in radical form. It came from exponential form to radical form. Okay, now this next one is going to be a seventh root to the fourth power, and it's 5m minus 7t. Okay, now these want to be written in exponential form. Now, you'll notice, does, is this saying the 4 is negative? Do we ever put a negative for our root? No, this is just a negative out front. Okay, so don't let that negative throw you off. I'm just going to put it back out front again. Okay, now it's outside, so am I going to use parentheses? No, so I have negative C. The root is 4, the exponent is 5 with no parentheses because that negative was on the outside. Now if it was on the inside, would I use parentheses? Yes. Okay, here, again, that negative 3 is out front. So I'm going to put that negative 3 back out front. But here I have two things. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in parentheses. Now what would the root be here? If there's no little number, what is the root? Huh? 2. It's a square root if there's no little number. Now there's no exponent outside, so it's this. Now you'll notice the negative 3 is not to the 1 half power. The only thing to the 1 half power is the 5y cubed because that was what was inside the house. between number 13 and 14. On both? Are you sure? Okay, number 14 you for sure can because it's this whole thing to the fourth power so the fourth cancels the four, and this is just x plus y. But is number 13 the same? No, because if you were to write this four times and multiply it, it's not just going to equal x to the fourth, y to the fourth. If you'll notice, the difference is that there's a plus sign in the middle, and it's not the whole thing to the fourth power. Okay, this actually does not simplify. No, it just doesn't simplify. That's your work. They do, but it's x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. If it was x to the fourth times y to the fourth, we'd be able to cancel it all. But it's not that. So this was just to show you the difference of when it's all of it versus some of it. My computer's like freaking out. She is not here right now. Okay, so let's look at number 15. Okay, we have 81, and we have y to the, I mean, to the fourth root. So you can look at your paper. Is 81 a perfect fourth root? What is it? 3 to the fourth. So I can rewrite this as 4 through 3 to the 4, and the fourth root cancels the 4, and what's my answer? Okay, look at number 17. So I have 250, and 250, is that a perfect cube? No, so what do we do? We do the tree thing. I know 5 goes into 250 50 times. I know 5 goes into 50 how many times? 10 times. I know 5 goes into 10 two times. Now I have all prime, 
and this is a cube root, so how many do I need to match? Three. Well, I have three fives, so what comes out of the house? The five. And then I have cube root of what left? Two. Okay. Well, this is a cube root, so we, because it's a cube root. Now, if it was a square root, we would have taken out a 5, but we would have had a 5 and a 2 left, so it would have been 5 root 10. Okay. Now, here, they're both cube roots, and it's multiplication. Can I combine what's under the houses? when multiplying? Yes. So this becomes a cube root of 9x squared times 4x. Well, what's 9 times 4? 36. And what's x squared times x? x cubed, right? Does 36, well, 36 is not a perfect cube. So let's break it down with the tree. 3 goes into 36 how many times? 12 times. 3 goes into 12 how many times? And 2 goes into 4 two times. Now, does anything match 3 times? No, so do we get to take the 36 out at all? No. But how many x's do I have? So can the cube root cancel the cube? So we get to take the x out, but the cube root of 36 stays. Any questions on that one? So now we have 343. Is 343 a perfect cube? It is. Okay, 7 cubed. So I can rewrite this as 5 cube root of 7 cubed. And what happens? And what do I do with the 5 and the 7? Multiply them. And what's 5 times 7? 35. Okay, so now we have a square root. 24 is not a perfect square, so let's break it down. What goes into 24? 2 and 12. 2 goes into 12 six times. 2 goes into 6 three times, and now everything's prime. But remember, when there's no number, you can put a 2, so we need two of them to match. So I have 2 here. Now, I also remember we've kind of written these like this. Something squared, something squared, something squared, right? Well, I have 2 squared, but what do I have left over? That 2 and the 3 at the bottom, so that's 6. So I'm going to write it over here because it's still under the house. Now, how many times does 2 go into 6? 3 times 2 is 6, so I have no remainder for my m, right? How many times does 2 go into 5? Two times. Two times two is four, so do I have an n remainder? One more, right? One more n left? This is what cannot come out of the house. It's going to remain in the house because it was not squared to take out. Now, the square root cancels the squared, the squared, the squared, so I get to take out a two m cubed n squared. I also want to show you all, this is why when we do the tree, we get to take out the pair and we don't multiply them back together. Because doesn't that just represent 2 squared? Well, the square root cancels the squared up here. Doesn't that, that represent 5 cubed 
Well, the cube root cancels the cube. That's why just a 5 comes out. Okay. Stopped here. Okay, so this is 2 twice, right? So I put a square, 2 squared. Okay, here I have 6 m's. Well, 2 goes into 6 3 times, so I put m cubed, because 3 times 2 is 6, so I didn't change it. That's still the same, right? Now here, I have 5 n's. 2 goes into 5 2 times, so I put 2 n's inside, but there's 5 n's. That only represents 4 of them right there. So I have that remainder over here. Just like I had the remaining letters, I mean numbers, sorry, over here as well, 2 and 3. So the reason I want to write it as something squared, something squared, something squared is because I want to cancel it with the square root, right? But this over here, the 6n, did not have any squared to cancel. So that had to stay under the house. But here I canceled the square root, the squared, the squared, the squared, and I had a 2m cubed n squared left that got to come out of the house. You're not my phone. Can we simplify this? No, it's just like number 13. There's a plus sign in the middle, okay? This, I could technically rewrite 27 as 3 cubed, right? But it's not the whole thing cubed, therefore it is as simple as it gets. It cannot be simplified. You can write can not be simplified. You can't put no solution because it's not asking for a solution. It's telling you to simplify it, and so it just cannot be simplified. Or if you rewrote the question and just boxed it, like if we just would have boxed it, I'm okay with that too because that's as simple as it gets. What's wrong with number 24? Yeah, we're not allowed to have a root at the bottom. So I can rewrite this as the root of 5 over the root of 3p. And I didn't change anything. I just separated the root. And remember, we're not allowed to have any roots on the bottom. No radicals in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by itself. But what I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator to keep it equal. Well, how many times am I multiplying 3p? twice, right? So isn't this just 3p twice? 3p times 3p? Now the top, they're not the same, so I can't do that. So what's 5 times uh, 3p? 15p. Now could I have technically wrote 9p squared if I wanted 3p times 3p? Yeah, but the reason I left it as 3p squared is because the square root cancels the squared, and it's just going to equal 3p. When you multiply a radical times itself, and it's squared, if you multiply it twice, it just cancels the root. Okay? So here, the 15p cannot simplify, and that's my answer. Hmm? Not, no, because this is under a radical and this is not. Now, if that was 15 in front of the radical, yes, we would simplify for sure. Yeah. But if something's under a radical, just watch. If you do the square root of 15, it's like 3.88 something, something, something. That's not a factor of 3. You see what I'm saying? Okay, on number 25, remember when we have multiple radicals, you can multiply them together, right? So can't you also take them apart? 
how can we rewrite 9? It's not a perfect cube, it's not a perfect fourth power, but it is a perfect square, right? So I can rewrite this as 5 square root square root 3 squared. Because what's 2 times 2? 4, so did I change anything mathematically? No, I just separated one of the roots into two square roots instead. And I know that 3 squared equals 9. So then I can cancel one of the square roots and the squared, and I'm left with fifth root square root 3. Now, because nothing here can be simplified, what's 5 times 2? So this just becomes the tenth root of 3. It, it, it was a 4, but isn't 2 times 2 4? Remember, your rule, when you have roots, it's the same thing as m times n root x. So if you have a number, you can separate it. And so since that was a 4, I could separate it into two squares, square roots. Okay, let's look at number 26. Okay, I have cube roots, but they don't match. So I know that a 3 can go into 5 and a 3 can go into 6, so I can simplify that root. 3 can't go into 2, but it can go into 6, so I can simplify this root as well. So I need to write this as something cubed, something cubed, and I'm probably going to have a remainder. How many times does 3 go into 5? One time, right? So this is x cubed, but how many do I have left over? If there's three x's here, how many more do I have? Two more, right? Because three and two make five. Now, how many times does six go into three? Twice. Is there anything remaining? Two times three is six, so there's no remainder. So this becomes 4, well, I'm still going to have a cube root of x squared. Hold on, it's, no, I haven't done anything with it. That 4x is still here. Okay, so the cube root's going to cancel the cube and the cube. So I get to take out an x, so I have 4, well, what's x times x? And then y squared. So this is now the left side of this plus sign. Okay, now I'm going to simplify this one up top so I don't take all my space over here. So I need something cubed, something cubed. Well, can I write, does 3 go into 2 at all? Which one? Yes, I did. But see how there's an x outside and now I'm taking this one out with it? That makes there are two x's on the outside. because this was my remainder. I couldn't cancel the 2. And 3 and 2 make 5, so I couldn't cancel that 2. Now here, does 2 go into 3? I mean, sorry, does 3 go into 2? No, so I can't even put x in there. I'm going to have 2x's remaining no matter what. Now, does 3 go into 6? Twice. So cube root cancels the cube, and I have that 5x squared. And I get to take out that y squared, but I have that cube root x squared remaining. Now, do they both have a cube root x squared? Remember, when adding or subtracting, they have to have the same root. They both have a cube root x squared, and they have to have the same variables, too. This is x squared y squared. This is also x squared y squared. So what's 4 plus 5? was a lot.
Okay, so let's look at 37. What's wrong with this one? There's a root on the bottom. I don't know. Oh, because I don't know what happened. It should be 27. My bad, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by root 2. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Okay, and this becomes 5 root 2 over, well, this doesn't this become square root of 2 squared? Isn't that 2 twice? Square root cancels the squared, and I get 5 root 2 over 2. Does that simplify, 5 over 2? No, so that's my answer. Miss. Yes. Can you explain why uh, x is squared and the answer for number 26? Oh, it should be. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. That was an oversight on me. Thank you. Okay, let's still get 28. So what do we do here? Double distribute. What's 3 times 3? What's 3 times negative root 6? Negative 3 root 6. Because remember, this is the same thing as putting a 1. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and there's only one root, so root 6. Now, positive root 6 times 3 is positive 3 root 6. And positive root 6 times negative root 6 is negative. Well, isn't that 6 multiplied twice? So this root cancels the squared, and I'm left with a negative 6. 9 is 9. What happens to these middle two that are alike? They cancel. So what's 9 minus 6? The middle two, because this is negative 3 root 6 plus 3 root 6. So I take three of them, and then I give three of them back. I have none. Okay, well, anytime it has something squared, we just write it twice. So root 5x minus root 3, root 5x minus root 3. Okay, so knowing that, I'm going to double distribute. Well, when I multiply something by itself, I can write it as itself squared. Now, could I also multiply it out? What's 5 times 5? And what's x times x? Well, will they both end up being 5x whenever we cancel the square root? Yeah. Okay. So here, I am going to multiply these because they're not the same. What's 5x times 3? So I'm going to get negative because that was a negative. Now this is also a negative, so I'm going to have another negative 3 times 5x, which is 15x. And then a negative times a negative makes a positive, and that's 3 twice, so 3 squared. So the square root cancels the squared, square root cancels the squared. So I have 5x. Here I have positive 3. What happens here? A lot of y'all got stuck on the practice problem like this. Well, remember, you can put a negative on front of them. What's negative 1 minus 1? Negative 2. Nothing here can combine, so that is your answer. You can put them in front. That's one root of 15x. Just like when you use a variable, can't you put a one in front of it if there's no number? Same concept. No, because they're both negative. If one of them was positive, yes, we would cancel them. But the only time y'all are going to have something cancel is when they're conjugates. That fancy word, remember, see how these are exactly the same except one's plus, one's minus? That's why something canceled. Here, they're both minus, so nothing's going to cancel. Okay? So here they're both plus. So three root 3 times root 3, well, that's root 3 squared. Root 3 times 12. Well, isn't what's 3 times 12? Okay. Then I have 12, root 12 times root 3, which is again 36. And then I have 12, root 12 times root 12, which is 12 squared. 
Sorry, I'm squeezing that in there. That's 12 squared right there. Okay, so the square root cancels the square root, and I'm over 3. Well, what's the square root of 36? The square root of 36 is 6. Then the square root cancels the square root, and I'm left with 12. So 3 plus 6 plus 6 plus 12 is 27. Okay, so on this one, can we rewrite this? Does 5 go into 60? Yeah. Yeah, so we have 4, and we can rewrite this as something to the fifth power. You said it goes into there 12 times? So 12 times 5 should give me 60, and it does. So can't I cancel the 5 and the 5? And I'm left with the fourth root of x to the 12th. Does 4 go into 12? Yeah, so I can rewrite this as something to the fourth power. Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the fourth root cancels that, and I'm just left with x cubed. Now, I'm going to show you a different way you could have done that one. Okay? Um, now, this doesn't always work, but it could sometimes. So what's 4? Well, this is a 2 technically, right? If there's no number, it's a 2. What's 4 times 2? Does 8 go into 24? So can I rewrite it like this and just do it once? Yeah, I can write this as 8th root. I need something to the 8th power. So again, you could do 24 divided by 8. It goes into it 3 times. So the 8 cancels the 8, and I'm left with x cubed. Could I have done that method here? Yeah. Okay, let's look at number 38. I don't know what happened to my numbering. Yeah, I was moving things around because I took problems off, so don't judge me. I did. Well, I edited it. Okay, so can 32 break down? Can 162 break down? That's what we need to figure out. 2 goes into 32 how many times? 16, right? 16 is a perfect square of 4 and 4. Remember, when it's a perfect square, you can stop. So this becomes 4 root 2. No freeze. Why did I just mess up? Isn't it a cube root? It's not a square root. So pay attention. Don't do like me. So this can break down to 2 and 2. This can break down in 2 and 2. So I need a group of three, not a group of two. So I can take out a two, and I have a two and a two left. So what's 14 times two? Well, I'm just going to write it like this. So I have the 14 already there, right? I can take a two out, and I have cube root of these two twos left. What's two times two? Four. Minus, I have a 15 already there. Let's break down 162. 2 goes into 162 81 times. Yes, 81 is a perfect square, but we are not looking for squares. So 3 can go into 81 27 times. 3 goes into 27 9 times, 3 and 3. So what do I have a pair of 3's here? So I could take a 3 out. And what do I have left over? Which is what? So 14 times 2 is 28. Cube root 4. What's negative 15 times 3? Negative 45. Cube root 6. They are not alike, so they cannot combine. Therefore, that is your answer. Okay, on number 34, we know that we have 
a cube root. Are negatives okay with a cube root? Yes. As long as it's an odd number root, a negative is allowed. If it's an even number root, is it allowed? No. Okay. So here, I know that this is okay, but I know that I'm not allowed to have a um, root on the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as cube root b6 over cube root negative a to the 19th. Now, I know I can cancel this because six, 3 goes into 6, right? How many times? Okay, so knowing that, did I change anything when I rewrote the denominator like this? 2 times 3 is 6, correct? Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the top as well. Now, how many times is 3 going to 19? If you're unsure, you can divide. Now, it goes into 6 whole times, but there's going to be a remainder, right? So I can put negative a to the 6th here. 6 times 3 is what? So I'm going to have an a left over. Okay. So knowing that, my cube root cancels my cubed, and I'm left with b squared. Okay, and then my cube root cancels my cube, and I can take out a negative a to the sixth, but I still have a cube root with my remainder of a. Because 6 times 3 is 18, and then 19 is there. This is the 19th A. Okay. What did you ask? Oh, okay. It's the cube root, yeah. So same concept on number 35. We need to rewrite this. Okay, so I need to rewrite it as something cubed, something cubed. So I have cube root of something cubed, but 3 does not go into 13 pretty, so I know I'm going to have a remainder, yes? Now, does 3 go into 9 pretty? Yeah, so am I going to have a remainder in the denominator? No. So what's, how many times does 3 go into 9? 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9, so I rewrote this right. How many times does 3 go into 13? 4. So I have negative y to the 4th. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, so how many do I still have? I have 1 unnamed. So 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13, so I did it correctly. So cube root cancels my cube, cube root cancels my cube. Now this is still under the house, so I get negative y to the 4th, cube root y over x cubed. So on number 36, I need to break these down and see if they can simplify so I can see if I can add or subtract. Remember when you're add or, when you're addering, when you're adding or subtracting, they have to have the same number inside of their root, and the roots must be the same. Well, they're both cube roots, but they do not have the same number inside the root right now. So we need to see if we can break this down. So I know that 5 goes into 125, 25 times, and 5 goes into that 5 times. Now, could I have just looked at my yellow paper on that one? Yes, 125 is a perfect cube of 5 cubed. So I know that this becomes just 5. What's 2 times 5? 
So this is just 10. Minus is 64 perfect cube. Yeah, it's four cubed, so don't do what I just did. What's So this ends up being four cubed. Cube root cancels the cubed. What's five times four? What's 10 minus 20? Okay, I know my numbering is off on these, so don't judge. Number 40. Okay, what do I do here? double distribute. So 3 times 6 is what? 3 times negative 2 root 5 is negative 6 root 5. 4 root 5 times 6 is 5, 10, 15, 20, 24 root 5. And 4 root 5 times negative 2 root 5. Well, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Well, isn't that 5 twice? So I'm just going to write it like that so I can cancel it right away. If you multiplied it out, you would have gotten 25. What's the square root of 25? 5. So I didn't write anything differently. So this becomes negative 8 times 5. And I can combine these two because they are alike. So I have negative 6 plus 24, which is 18. So I get positive 18 root 5. What's negative 8 times 5? So what can I combine? 18 minus 40, which gives me negative 22. Remember, your whole numbers should go in front of your roots. Okay, on number 41, we can cancel the root first or we can make the match with the root. So I'm going to actually just cancel the root. How would I cancel this square root of 2? I'd multiply it by square root of 2. What I do to the denominator, I also have to do it to the top. Well, what's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? The square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? What's well, 2 times 2? So now I have a denominator of 4 with 3 root 2 on top. What's 3 plus 5? Does this simplify? What's 8 divided by 4? On this one, you're just going to distribute. What's 8 times 2? So I have 16 root 5. And 8 times 3? 3. Okay, now, is this in proper order? No. If you would have left it, I wouldn't be mad. But proper would be this. Okay, so same concept here. Let's get rid of the root first. So I'm going to multiply by root 3, multiply by root 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, What's or you could write 3 squared, which cancels. What's 5 times 3? So I end up with a denominator of 15 and 7 root 3 on top. Well, what can 15 and 30 both turn into? There's two ways to do this one, actually. Could you simplify 8 over 30? To come 4 over 15. That would make a common denominator. Could you also just multiply both of these by 2? Either way, you're going to have to simplify in the end, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll simplify this. I get 7 root 3 over 15 minus 4 root 3 over 15. What's 7 minus 4? 3 root 3 over 15. Does 3 over 15 simplify? 
How many times does 3 go into 15? 5 times. So this becomes 1 root 3 over 5. Okay, here, this is technically over 1. How do you want to do this one? Do you want to just make a match and we'll cancel later? So let's do that method just because I want to show you that you could do either way. So on this one, we canceled the root first. On this one, we canceled the root first. Let's just make a match. So 1 times anything is itself. So I can just multiply this by root 6. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Well, now I have both of them as a denominator of root 6. Well, this becomes 6 squared. Square root cancels the squared, so isn't it just 6? Yes. So what's 12 plus 6? So I have 18 over root 6. Now I have to cancel the root. How do I cancel a root 6? I multiply by root 6. So this becomes 6 squared, which just makes the denominator 6, 18 root 6. What's 18 divided by 6? So it doesn't matter which method you go about. As long as you cancel your root in the end, you'll get the same answer. Okay. So same concept on this one. What do you want to do? Which method did you like better? Canceling the root at the end or the beginning? Okay, so let's cancel it at the beginning. So we're going to multiply this side by root 5. So this ends up being 5 squared, which cancels, and I have a denominator of 5 with 15 root 5 on top. Minus, well, if, I want, if this is a denominator of 5, can I multiply this by 5 to become a denominator of 5? So times 5 times 5, what's 5 times 4? What's 20 minus 15? Huh? So I have 5 root 5 over 5. Well, the 5's cancel, and my final answer is just root 5.